Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharatiya, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again Lauren Gill, co founder and CPO at Cast AI. Lauren, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you. Very nice to talk to you. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a quite some time since we last talked, uh, but of course, uh, it's always great to have you here on the show. So I would take this opportunity to once again remind our viewers, what is, what is Cost AI all about? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So what we do is the following. We, we built an engine that um, understands very quickly in minutes how much compute, how much resources your application need on any of those free cloud providers, AWS, Google, and Azure. Once this engine knows exactly how much compute it, uh, your application need, it automatically right size and cost optimize your application so that it uses only the resource you need, nothing less, but also nothing more. And the good thing of this is it's a real-time engine. So if your application grow, let's say you are a SaaS business and it's the morning time, so people are logging in into your app, then Cast AI will expand your infrastructure and fit the utilization curve to exactly the right amount of compute at the right time. And then at night, it does the opposite. It right size or bin pack, uh, um, meaning re reduce your infrastructure as it's not required. So that's a, a fully automated cost optimization engine for uh, uh, AWS, Google, and, and um, Azure, and it works for cloud native applications. Recently at KubeCon, there was an open source project launch called OpenCost, which was designed to help, you know, users of Kubernetes to look at the cost. So can you talk about a lot of efforts are going on in this space, which does mean that cost in cloud is becoming a very serious, you know, challenging topic. So talk about how serious is it? Yeah, it's very serious and I'll tell you why. So there are talks right now of recession, whether it will happen or not, we'll see soon. But what recession means is that your revenue have are under pressure. Right? At the same time, inflation is kicking in. So your costs go up but your revenue go down. Right? That's the trend that we, uh, we see uh, in, in mature industry. And what it means is companies start to, to think of analyzing and see where do they spend, where is the cost of goods sold for this application? It's extremely true even for SaaS business where cost of goods sold equal cloud cost for most of them. So the uh, the idea of, hey, how much are we spending on AWS? And do we really need to spend that much? That idea is starting to be very important. You see, this is the reason why you see um, some super cool projects such as the one you mentioned that are all about observability. They will tell you, hey, uh, you're using all these machines. This is how much you spend. Um, and at least it tells you the size of the problem that you may have. Now, the big difference though is, and what I, re I truly believe is, once you know how much you spend, you have done 10% of the work. The work is not only how much you're spending, the work is how do you reduce this? And this is what we believe in. This is what we do. And that's where there's difference between great cost reporting on one side and observability and reducing your cost on the other side. Reducing costs has to be a real-time engine, and it, a simple cost reporting is not going to tell you what to do about it, and this, that's why we, uh, we started uh, Cast AI. Excellent. No, you once again very well said that, I mean, knowing that, hey, this is where consumption is going, is okay, but doing something and in the world of cloud native or even cloud native world, things are getting automated. So uh, services like Castia, they do help a lot. Now, can you also talk about where do you see most, I won't say cloud based, but essentially where you feel that people, you know, is either over provisioning or, you know, you, it's so easy to get resources on cloud. Where do you see people are making mistakes where we do need to cut down. There are two things. First of all, yes, you do need resources, as you mentioned, at night time, it can slow down depending on, but at the same time, there are folks are like, hey, just get everything that we need and we'll see whether we are going to use it or not. So can you talk about some mistake that mostly folk make? Yeah, and uh, you know, it's not so much a mistake. It's just very, very hard to understand and do right sizing in real time. So I'll tell you, we have um, a few thousand applications using, using our product, right? We have a free version for cost reporting. So we have a lot of data that comes from it. 
the average over provisioning that we see is 40%. Like if you think about this, right? Almost half of your bill are for things you're paying for that you don't use. And it's this is the same regardless of the cloud provider and also regardless of the user. So it's not that, oh, there are some users that are a little bit better than others. It's these statistics is extremely stable regardless of applications, whether it's a small app, a big one, a big application, the number is always almost the same all the time. And that's that's why it tells you it's just hard for a human to do this. I mean, imagine this. How do you go from 10 machine to 8 machine if they are all being used? They just don't use very well. Right? So which one do you try to shut down? Can you shut it down? Like, what are the workloads working on it? Can you, can you move them around? What happens if you move them around? You see, all these questions are the reason why the, it's, it's almost impossible for the human to uh, do it by hand. So that's, that's why this problem is a massive problem, where, you know, only, only, I mean, where automation is at least giving you some hope that you can have the machine do it for you. That's, uh, that's my answer. So it's nothing to do with competence or even culture. It's, it's just hard to do it by hand. Right. I think uh, as you're talking about, you know, it's not a mistake. I think this is how the cloud works at least at this point, you know. The cloud providers don't really make it easy for you. Well, I mean, they make it easy to increase. They don't make it easy to decrease. That's the problem. You know, in the old days where you had your data center, if you want a VM, you have to ask six or seven people. I mean, there was a nightmare, right? Remember, you have to go to the CFO and say, I need a machine for this and this and this. And then they will tell you, fine, you'll have it in three months. But right. now, the developer can do it. And they will say, I, I need five. Why? Oh, because because it must be five. And, and, and then they say, let's try with five and see what happens. So it's so easy to do, and the cloud providers made it easy to do. And uh, it's, it's, it's part of the part of the reason why that, that over-provisioning happens. But thanks God, it's easy to do, is my other comment. Uh, you're right, and sometimes like, just just get six just in case, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The number one issue of DevOps is not so much to reduce cost, is to make sure the app works. Can you share if you have some data or stats on uh, basically um, how much cloud waste is happening or open provisioning is happening? What are the areas where it's happening? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we did this uh, these statistics. We do it uh, almost every month. So, I'll, I'll tell you what the number is. It's very simple to understand. So, about about forty percent. It, it moved between thirty-seven and forty-two. Depends uh, over time. But as the a good average is over forty percent of your compute is not used. Not, not used means you're using all the machines. You just don't use it at 90% or 100% each of them. You're using them on average at maximum of 60%. So 40% is your, is your over provisioning. Um, the other number is very interesting is there are about 600 VM to choose from on AWS. Google and Azure is the same. So which one do you take? <laughs> Well, they're not the same. Some have more memory per CPUs. Others have AMD and not Intel. Then there are some that have ARM processor and others don't have ARM processor. So the other question is, once you know, once you do right sizing, so you only use, and you only pay for what you use, which ones do you select? And the average savings there is around 7%. So you see, look at this, 7% of your bill could be reduced just by swapping one machine by another. Just by doing this, like the application is the same, right? You don't redeploy it, you don't change anything. It works the same way, it's in the same location. There's no change of anything. It's just that you use a more cost effective machine over the other. So it's about 7%. And then the rest, so about 20, 22 to 25% of your cost can be reduced by using spot instance or I call it highly discounted machines that you can have on Google, Azure, and uh, AWS. So, and the impact is around 25%. And people ask me, yeah, but the discount of a spot instance is usually 70%, that's right, but not all your workload will be compatible with the ephemeral aspect 
of a spot instance. You see, a spot instance come and go, right? Uh, you can use one today and Google or Amazon can tell you, you have two minutes and they say, sorry, but I need it back. And you have no choice. You have to give the machine back. So not all workload would be compatible with this. In Kubernetes world, the stateless microservice, I mean, it's almost like the ideal case to use spot instance. And that's why the impact is 25% and not 70%. When you add all this, that's the 65, 63 to 65% cost savings. That's the average that we see with people that are using Cast AI. And if you flip 65 the other way, it means on average, customers are spending three times more than they should on cloud native application. That's what 65% means. Um, being broken into 40% right sizing, seven ish percent. Um, swapping expensive machines by cheaper one, and then the remaining by using discounted machines such as spot instance. The other way, like a reserve instance and savings plan, uh, have the same impact almost. I don't like reserve instance and savings plan because they force you to have a commit. Uh, the good thing with spot instance is you can buy and get rid of them as you wish. Uh, so I prefer that. Conceptually, I prefer the use of spot. It's more it's more true to the spirit of the cloud. So you can use machines and then not use them when you don't need them. Uh, but yeah, but you can get the same with reserve instance and savings plan with the commitment. It's a few thousand apps, 65%, that's the average. Uh, some customers more, others is less. I think the highest we have is 93.7%. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> it's on Google. They reduce their cost by more than 10x. Um, because that was the, almost the ideal case of cloud native. They had huge replicas of a few workload. They could almost all use spot instance except a few. Uh, and it was highly volatile, so it goes up and down very quickly. So we were able to right size in real time. Uh, so that's the highest we have. But the average is 65. Can you also talk about how much impact is there on call, cloud cost or the fact of multi-cloud hybrid cloud approach as well? Well, you're not just using one, you are actually using multiple clouds as well. Oh, that's a very interesting question. We do have um, made this kind of deployments. Um, this I would say is uh, probably the extreme deployment you can do, which is uh, you can use us as a true multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud deployment. I'll tell you the multi-cloud first and then the hybrid cloud after. The multi-cloud is the following. You could theoretically deploy a Kubernetes application, so it's called a cluster, technically, across more than one location. So imagine that you have an application that uses 10 machines. Three, three of these 10 are Amazon and seven are on Google. They are connected through a secure VPN. And because they are in the same location, they are within five milliseconds from each other. Like all cloud providers are in the same places, it's US East, but even in, in Tokyo, they are in the same building almost, right? Or across the street. So they are within five milliseconds to each other. When you do this, you can effectively do a pricing arbitrage across cloud. So you don't do the arbitrage within only AWS itself, but you add the other 600 VMs potential of Google, and you also sort them by by cost, and then and then suddenly you see sometimes it's very interesting to watch this. You see an application that is scaling up, where the scale up may use spot instance on Google, even though the on demand stays on Amazon, because the engine says, oh well, the right now the spot instance is cheaper on Google Cloud than it is on AWS, therefore it selects to Google, Google, and here you have this uh, super autonomous cluster that actually grow and is alive because it grows uh, horizontally and vertically across more than one location. We, we even did this on three cloud. It's so incredible. So it's, you see a piece on Azure, a piece on Google, a piece on AWS, and then it will, it will constantly move and change according to the price structure. So that, that thing you can do, it's fascinating to see. It's like the extreme, extreme cost savings. That I, would, I would do this only for either critical apps where you absolutely need the, the capacity or for speciali specialized services such as, well, you may need a GPU that is on Google, but the rest is on AWS. So you can do this kind of arbitrage for this use case. The other one is hybrid. And we are we're having some discussion there where imagine that you have a cluster, so a Kubernetes app that live on-prem, that use five machine on-prem. 
Um, but this mach- this application is growing, and it's only five machines on prem. Like you, you can't add another another one unless you wait for a few weeks for that to happen. Well, with a system like our, you could burst on the cloud. So you you because it's it's the same thing. The the engine says where I need an, another machine. Where is the best place to run it? And the uh, uh, the engine will say, oh, well, I'm on-prem. I have no more space. Hey, AWS, do you have space for me? And as long as your data center is nearby one of the cloud provider, you see machines being added on a hyperscaler. And then when, when the burst is finished, they are being deleted because they're not necessary anymore. And where are they the cheapest place to delete them? Maybe it's on AWS. So the engine will delete them on Amazon and repatriate the workload on-prem because it's a sunk cost, so they are probably cheaper to run on-prem. It's a really interesting use case. Let's just talk about on-prem quickly. That is that, you know, when we, I look at Castia, you know, you free resources which are not used by it. I mean, I'm looking at developer as a user here instance. On-prem, you know, you have limited resources in a way. So can Castia also help you know, utilize resources in a much more efficient way by freeing which are not being used, or it's only limited or restricted to uh, the public cloud. No, no, it it works super super well on prem. Think of this, you know, the same sixty five percent is true, almost true, whether it's on prem or on the cloud. The forty percent right sizing applies because it it is a Kubernetes issue. It is not a cloud issue. So, imagine this. If you just take right sizing and you say you turn on optimization on prem, it's almost the same as saying my data center is doubling in size. Because now I am freeing up 40% on average of the VM I was using on prem because I don't need them. So the true is, is the, the the reverse is true on prem, but on prem cost optimization is translated by freeing some resources that you don't need anymore. And therefore, uh, your data center on-prem becomes bigger than you thought um, because you are using it better. There are other translations, right? It also means your electricity cost goes down because you don't need these 10 machines. You can do the same with five or six of them. So you can, you can use any angle like this uh, that are super, super interesting on-prem. People don't realize, but cost optimization on-prem um, has a direct translation. It's just not on cost, but on resource utilization. Right? Okay. Like your your uh, developers suddenly have more machines than they thought are available because they are using them much more efficiently, and they can burst on the cloud if they have no space. So the reverse is true. So you shrink the size and you burst on the cloud when you need to. It's really cool to see that. Lauren, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Castia once again. And I would love to have you back on the show because this is a topic which is ongoing and also it is it is becoming a big concern, not just because of potential uh, recession, but in general, uh, it, uh, it should be optimized. You know, we should not be wasting money no matter where it goes. So thanks for sharing those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, it's always a pleasure.